morning, everybody. As today is um, Remembrance Sunday, we want to be patriotic and be part of the celebration as well as to remember the war veterans, those that um, fought, died, and of course we still have some that are injured and are living. And it is the usual practice on a day like this to observe two minutes silence at 11, which we would like to join to do right away. People say, what do you do during those two minutes? As a church, we use that time to remember these people that have died, and more importantly, to remember their families that are still living, and of course, those that are injured that are still living, we pray for them. And we use the opportunity as well to pray for peace in our land. Shall we stand up to observe these two minutes silence? May the Lord answer our prayers. May we be seated, please.
been sorry. Praise the Lord. Lord. That I trusted this place and holy name. All the day long I sing the story, praising him for this wondrous love. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord. Lord. That I trusted this place and holy name. Surely I know our home is waiting, beautiful home in heaven above. I've never been so rich. Praise the Lord. Lord that I trusted this place and all in it. I've never been so rich. Praise the Lord. Lord that I trusted this place and all in it. Every moment I find it. All the way. This exactly the same. My soul has been singing every day. Sing the Savior. Sing the Savior. I've never been so rich. Praise the Lord. That I trusted this place. Turn to blend our voices to sing together. And we're beginning with hymn number 294, 294 CGS. We appreciate the choir who has given us a very good start to this service, beginning with um, clarinet quartet. And then the choir gave us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And then the last quartet that we just listened to, I've never been sorry. What a good start. It's our turn to blend our voices as well, to sing together. We take verses 1, 3, and 5 of 294. You are welcome to our service this morning. May the Lord bless you for joining us and for our internet audience, wherever you may be located. We pray that the Lord who is here with us will bless you as well. And in case you are living locally or visiting and you'd like to join us, you are very welcome. We're just at the beginning of our devotional service. We are located on number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA5 3EP. You are very welcome if you're able to do so. And for those who cannot, we can just um, blend our voices to sing together as we'll um, come before the Lord to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Verses 1, 3, verses 1, 4, and 5. 1, 4, and 5. Jesus, our great high priest, has full atonement made. Weary spirits rest. Mournful souls be glad. The year of jubilee is come. 
1, 4, and 5. To 178 from the same hymn book. 278, it is finished. Amen. Let's take verses 1, 2, and 4 of this one as well. Verses 1, 2, and 4. 278. Amen. Let's turn to the choruses now. Number 40, 40. Choruses. There is victory for me. Yes. Thank God that is what Jesus Christ has come to give each and every one of us. Let's take that chorus twice. There is victory for me. There is victory for me. There is victory for me. In a world of death and confusion, there is victory for me. For me, yes, me. For me, yes, me. In a world of death and confusion, there is victory. 
Amen. If that is not your testimony, it is our prayer that you will have a testimony like that this morning. Amen. Number 10. Number 10. Choruses, number 10. An ensign lifted high for heaven is our goal. Amen. For the battle draw an eye for every valiant soul. In this conflict for the right, there are soldiers for the fray. Number 10. There's an Amen. Another chorus, number 25. Another chorus, number 25. For it forth a mighty anthem. More than conquerors are we. And that is possible through the blood of Christ our Savior. 281 is another song about what Jesus accomplished for us. It is finished. He doesn't do something, anything halfway. When he starts, he finishes. Yeah. We're going to sing um, all these four verses, but um, the tune we are using will put two verses together as one. So we listen carefully to that. At the end, we're going to have Brother Francis who will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer, and we are going to stand up to sing all these um, four verses, but converted to two verses, as we shall see.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that it is finished. Yes, no more sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, O Lord God, for those strokes of the case that you took on our behalf. Thank you for the crown of thorns, O Lord, that you wore on our behalf. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus Christ, for that death, that groaning death that you died on our behalf. But we thank you that it did not end there. We thank you, Lord, that you resurrected. We praise you, Jesus, for bringing life unto us. Thank you, Lord God, for redeeming us from the pangs of hell, the pangs of sin and unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, for the victory that you have brought to us, that we can have victory over sin. We can live our life every moment of the day without sin and unrighteousness because the Bible says sin shall not have dominion over us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us victory over sicknesses and ailments and diseases. Thank you for giving us victory over death. Thank you, Lord, that there is life after life. Glory be to your name, O God. Glory be to your name, O Lord. Thank you because we are not hopeless. Thank God that Jesus Christ died for us, that we might live again. No wonder the Bible says, if our hope had ended in this world, then we would have been the most wretched of all men. Thank you, Lord, that we are the richest of all men. Thank you for the hope of eternal life. If there be anyone here today, Lord, that hasn't got this living hope in him or her, we ask that, Lord, you will redeem their souls today. We pray that you open their eyes to see the atonement, Lord God, and all that you have accomplished for us on the cross, that they will take advantage of it. Save souls today, O oh Lord. Let souls be sanctified. Father, we pray that you baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Speak your word with power. Let it comfort with authority. Lay your hands upon the preacher, O oh God. Use him as instrument of righteousness and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Once again, we welcome everybody to this, our Remembrance Sunday service. May the Lord bless you for coming. We particularly welcome those attending our church for the first time and all our visitors. You are very welcome. As we may not have the opportunity to shake hands with all our new um, um, comers or visitors, um, we just want to let you know that we appreciate your presence. After you've prayed very well, a warm reception with light refreshment um, is available at the back hall. After you have prayed satisfactorily, please be sure to take advantage of that. While on this um, welcome address, I'd like to welcome Brother Asaya from our Portland headquarters, one of our ministers from Portland who is visiting us. Um, we are very happy to have him in our midst. He's not new to many of us, I want to believe. He's the father of one of our organists, Tolu Asaya. That's the father who is visiting us today. We are very happy to have him on our, in our midst. He's the one um, sitting beside Brother Francis. You can just look up here and see who's a visitor, and you will easily know the person. And we're also happy to report that our annual couples conference, which took place yesterday, was an enjoyable one, and it was successful. Well, if you just want to have a taste of that, or you want to check on my report, you can speak to any of the couples that made it to the conference yesterday. They will tell you that um, it was really blessed. Um, and of course, it was a time well spent with a lot of things to take home. We also had a prayer session, and we just continue to pray that God will bless all couples Amen. and all aspiring couples Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening, we are going to have revival and evangelistic service at 5 p.m. Wednesday, we continue with our Bible study on um, holiness. We are currently looking at holiness in communications. We started that uh, this last week. The second part of that will take place this Wednesday, so I want to encourage you to do your best not to miss it. If you cannot come here, we have other Bible study centers that um, you can choose whichever one is nearest to you and be part of this family study on such an important topic 
that um, if we all want to see the Lord, as the Bible says, we must be holy. And as we are looking at all those different areas of holiness, we encourage you to please attend. And on Friday at 8 p.m., we are going to have prayer meeting. Saturday, the monthly women's prayers from 8 to 10, which will take place at um, a Beckham branch. Just, I think I announced last Sunday, um, after this one, we have one more. And the one that we have, should Jesus tarry in December, will be a decisive one in terms of how the Lord will help us to um, continue with that special prayer meeting in the new year. Continue to pray along with us. And of course, if you have any thoughts in terms of the arrangement of that, especially those that have been attending faithfully from time to time, please let, let us know. And we will carry all this forward as we are trying to make progress or adjust to things that are, are okay for us in the new year by God's grace. Next Sunday, should Jesus tarry, we are going to have all our usual meetings, beginning with Sunday school at 9.30, devotional service at 11, revival and evangelistic service at 5 p.m. We've been announcing for some time now, and we continue to do so until maybe for a few more weeks, the contributions, voluntary contributions to support our Caribbean churches that were affected by the last hurricane, and also for our Takora D. Brand Church in Ghana. Um, those contributions have been coming in, and we still continue to announce for those who will have to, who wants to contribute to that, please try and do so. We announced last Sunday about the need to pray in support of our Superintendent General's visit to Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria in particular. Um, according to the schedule, which he shared with me or he sent to me, it should be at Work Headquarters Church in Antony um, this morning um, in Lagos for the services. And then he will continue again from tomorrow with more dedications um, still in Nigeria before he returns home during the course of the week. I've told him that you are praying for him and he appreciates that so much. So please let us continue to remember him in prayer. The Lord has been looking after all the meetings and visits and dedications um, in Ghana, in Nigeria, um, up till now, and we know the Lord is able to finish that with him Amen. and take him back home safely. Amen. Okay, because of our time, we are not going to go into the first special. At the end of this announcement, Brother Asaya will come forward to give us the Bible reading. And at the end of the Bible reading, we are going to have the last special, which is titled, It is Finished. Amen. And then the word of exhortation. God bless you. For this devotional service, our Bible reading is taken from the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter. We're starting the reading from the seventh verse. Revelation 12, we're starting from verse 7 through 12. Revelation 12, 7 through 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice crying on heaven, now is, salvation, is, now is come salvation Amen. and strength Amen. 
and the kingdom of our God Amen. and the power of his Christ. Amen. For the accusers of our brethren Hallelujah. is cast down, Amen. which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and by the word of their testimony. Amen. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Amen. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, Amen. and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knew it that he heard for a short time.
and victory was mine for the claiming. And now, praise His name, I am free. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no. Taking our text from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 19, verse 30. John 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Amen. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Today is set aside in the UK as a Remembrance Sunday to commemorate the anniversary of the end of the hostilities in the last two world wars and in the later conflicts it was um, Amnesty's Day yesterday, which I want to believe many of us um, know about, during which um, two minutes silence was observed at exactly the time that we had it today at 11 a.m., representing the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of the year 1918 when the gun of Europe fell silent. When the war was declared, declared over, what a day, what a time that was. It's an annual event, and many things are usually put in place to remember the service of those that paid the price with their lives and some that are still living today, but were wounded in those conflicts. We want to pray that may the Lord remember those that are alive Amen. and all the family members of the dead. Amen. And may the Lord bless our world with peace Amen. and stop all wars. Amen. So many activities are in place to commemorate this. This will include extensive march fast with army bands and parades, laying of wreaths at the cenotaph in the city, and of course, the raising of funds through the sale of um, red poppies, like the one on me, for the army as well as for the cause of peace. 
War is a terrible thing. May God not let us see wars again. And where there are wars right now, may God please in his mercy stop them. As we remember the heroes and war veterans that have given their lives to fight and face death, in order for us to have peace and freedom, as we think of them and we appreciate them and the sacrifices that they have made, we have here another war. This was a great war. It was not termed the First World War, uh -huh. but it was the war of all the wars on Golgotha. Uh -huh. We have there Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the commander in chief, uh -huh. the captain, uh -huh. not carrying guns and bullets and powder, uh -huh. but with his own very life uh -huh. on Calvary on the cross. He fought that battle Amen. and he won that victory Amen. so that you and I can have peace. Yeah. The war we are talking about here is not between nations. We are talking about war between evil and the good. We are talking here about the wars between Righteousness and unrighteousness. The glory be to God. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of power. Amen. Winning power at that all the time. Always winning. Amen. There is no loss Amen. when it comes to the battle of the cross. It's a winning battle. Amen. If you let him, Jesus can declare today that all the wars and conflicts in your life, Amen. he can declare Amen. that it is finished. Amen. Amen. And as we commemorate this um, Remembrance Sunday for 2017, you can have added to that another victory in your soul. That Jesus Christ has fought a battle and he has won that battle for you. Yeah. Especially battles with sin, flesh, world, and Satan. We can have victory. Yeah. We can be free. Yeah. We can be set at liberty. Yeah. God can do that through Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we want to use this occasion to remember and offer our gratitude to the only one who offered himself to stop the enemy and conquer the enemy of our soul, Satan himself. Just talking about wars, what was the main cause or the causes of World War I, the First World War? What really led to that great rivalry between the um, great powers that allowed war to be on such a wide scale to break out in 1914? <clears throat> Historians or those that still are living, they will tell us many factors that were responsible for this. But all this can be summarized in few words. One will say that there are political alliances, imperialism, militarism, and nationalistic pride. Mm -hmm. All these were part of the things that accumulate in the First World War. This is different, of course, from the one of Second World War, which, of course, started by one man. The First World War claimed over 15 million lives and over 20 million people injured. It ended in Germany when, it ended when Germany 
signed an amnesty's agreement for peace. Um, actually, that um, I understood that that amnesty uh, was signed in France, but of course Germany is the major part here that has to sign into that. On the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, what a day that was! A war for just about four years claimed well over 15 million souls. We also read that even though that was declared as the end of the war, we still have some other rivalries and conflicts that are going on, and not until June 1919, when the treaty was signed in Versailles in France, that everything really completely rooted out and finished. I have had the opportunity during my last visit to France to be at this location in Versailles, just outside France. And you cannot but just remember how the um, people of power gather together in that place to say, enough is enough. Let us put an end to this. No need of just killing each other. That happened. But did we learn the lesson? Of course not. The lesson was not learned. Just barely about 20 years later, in 1939, the Second World War broke out. It was the largest war in human history, started by one man who wanted to be in charge of the whole world, wanted to dominate the whole world, and decided to go against all the agreements and the treaties that were signed in Versailles. And of course, this particular war claimed 45 to 60 million lives, out of which 6 million Jews were murdered. And actually, it was his main determination to wipe out all the Jews. But he can't do that. Because God has not declared that to happen. He did all that he could, but we thank God for the Jews that are still alive today. And of course, when this World War II was going on, everything was like, will this end? But he kept fighting, and people kept dying. Why am I saying all this? I think there is a similarity between all that led to this World War I and World War II and the original war. The original war started in heaven. The original war was declared in heaven. Let's look at, first of all, turn with me to the book of Isaiah. One man by the name Lucifer, an adorable angel. Isaiah 14, from verse 12. How are thou falling down from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how have thou called down to the ground which this weakened the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet, Thou shalt be brought down to hell, Amen. to the size of the pit. Amen. The similarity I'm trying to draw here, we are not in any way in an history lesson. I'm just trying to look at what started this war and what started this original war that we are saying Jesus has conquered. The enemy, Amen. Lucifer, one of those adorable angels in heaven, decided may God deliver us from pride. Amen. It's a terrible thing. Pride entered him and then perhaps in his mind, who is this God? I too can be above God. And what then happened? 
Let's go back to our Bible reading. Let's go back to our Bible reading. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. When you have someone that is so proud and wanted his way and wanted to do something that just want to show that I'm something, you will always have disciples. It's amazing when I read through this, that this angel, this Lucifer, had some other angels that were perhaps ailing him. Oh yes, why God? Why not go above him? They gathered together. And the Bible tells us here, that we have Michael and his own angels too. The fourth, verse 8 says, and prevailed not. There is no way anyone will prevail against God. And then there was no place found anymore for him in heaven. Verse 9, he was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan cast out into the earth, and his angels as well. And they saw this, and they followed him, and they came down. Verse 12 then declared, Therefore rejoice, Amen. ye heavens, Amen. and ye that dwell in them. However, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And the last verse of that chapter, verse 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of our seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see the origin of war? You see the antecedent of all wars? Satan came down in all his power, in all that he has, to fight you and me. And there is no way that on our own that we can overcome him. No. We can't. And God knew this in heaven. Because immediately he came down, you know what he did? He deceived the very first creation in terms of human beings. Eve went to Eve, he slew her. Went to Adam, spiritually speaking, slew him. I must win this battle. I will win this battle. God is not going to be the winner in this. And God looked down from heaven. Because ever since that time, Satan has been winning. Men, winning. Only a few exceptions. But the Bible tells us in Galatians 4, 4 that when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for the Son. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the fullness of time, God has his own timetable. I don't know what you are going through now. If you are a child of God, just believe that God has his own timetable. The enemy may be, it may seem as if he's winning. There is no way we win. There is no way he can win. God has his own timetable. The Bible declares that um, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son to redeem us, to deliver us, to fight our battle, to give us victory. You know, let me return to um, World War II. Ended with unconditional surrender by Germany. About a week after it was found that Hitler had committed suicide. Then um, that's why we have the um, victory for Europe there in May. But that happened in May 1945. How did Jesus also how did he end this war? By his suffering, by his death, 
by his resurrection, by Calvary. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. The Bible says that um, Jesus Christ took the key of death, Amen. the key of hell. Amen. Amen. All glory, Amen. all honor, Amen. all praise Amen. be unto Jesus Christ. Amen. Who can give you and I, if we want, victory Amen. over death, Amen. victory Amen. over hell? Amen. Doesn't mean that we are not going to die, but we have victory over death. Amen. What a day to remember. Amen. Praise God. Amen. A songwriter, just as the choir have just given us, put it this way. There's a line that is drawn through the ages. On that line stands an old rugged cross. On that cross, a battle is raging to gain a man's soul for all his loss. On one side, march the forces of evil, all the demons, all the devils of hell. On the other, the angels of glory. Amen. And they meet on Golgotha. Amen. You see the war there? You and I may not know, we may not see, there was a great war. I believe Satan was fighting all he could that Jesus, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this for them. Because if that is done, I'm finished. If that is done, I have no power over these people again. It was a battle. Yes. Remember, even before Jesus Christ got there, he went to pray, and it's like, how can I go through this? Lord, can't you do it some other way? Must I go through this? But if that is still your will, I submit to you. Amen. And all that he went through. The third verse says, the earth shakes with the force of the conflict, mm -hmm. and the sun refuses to shine. For their hands go sun in the balance. And then through the darkness, he cries, it is finished. Amen. The battle is over. Amen. If you think seriously of verse 4, there's something there for you and I. Yeah. Yet in my heart, the battle was still raging. And that is our prayer focus today. Yeah. Why will you still continue in that? Not all prisoners of war have come home. Is it not foolishness? You just remember on that 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month of 1948, when they say everything, 1918, when they say the war, war is over, and somebody still say, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. But that is what you are doing if you are still in your sins. Yeah. That is what you are doing if you are still in your conflict. Yeah. That is what you are doing if you are still in the war with yourself, war with God, war with others. Why do you want to do that? Not all the prisoners of war had come home. These were battlefields of my own making. You know, some people make a battle and then they are fighting that battle. The one they have made themselves. Why wasting your time? Why do you want to die like that? I didn't know, but today I want to declare. Yeah. Such individuals may not know, may not understand that the war had been won. Yeah. I declare that today to the whole world Amen. that the war against sin, Amen. war against flesh, Amen. war against the world, Amen. war against Satan Amen. is finished Amen. through the blood of our Lord and Amen. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is able to do that. He has done that for many people. He can do yours too today. Stop fighting. Stop that war. Yeah. It won't pay you. 
Oh, but then I heard the king of the ages. Hallelujah. I'd fought all the battles. Amen. It's not some battles. Amen. Check your heart. Let me check my heart. Why is that battle still there? Where is that battle coming from? Against unrighteousness, against unholiness, against unfaithfulness, against adultery, against fornication, against lying, against fighting, against uh, uh, jealousy. Where are they coming from? And that victory was mine. For the claiming. May you claim yours today. And now praise his name. I am free. You can be free. Because it is declared by Jesus Christ. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. No more war. It is finished. The end of that conflict. It is finished. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. The Son of God. Amen. The second person in Trinity. Amen. He is Lord. Amen. And he can give you victory. Amen. He can give us victory. Amen. As we celebrate. As we commemorate. As we remember. As we think of the war veterans. Those that have fought to give us peace and freedom that we enjoy today. Let all of us think of Jesus Christ, who has given us so much. When on that cross, Jesus Christ, with his own blood, he signed the agreement. We can call that the end of spiritual hostility. We can call that the end of all wars. Yes. Whatever war then comes, since Jesus Christ has now taken charge of our lives, he will continue to fight that battle. Yes. Thanks be to God, yes. which giveth us the victory yes. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus said, it is finished. The war is over. Yes. You can have victory. Yes. You can celebrate the end of spiritual hostility Amen. in your life. When war ceased in your life, Amen. as we gather around this altar, if you have not gotten this victory, I want to encourage you. If God has given you that victory, I want to encourage you as well to praise God for that and help him to continue to be victorious in your life. Amen. And if sin is still slaying you, if sin is still causing you problem, sin is still causing you attack, I want to let you know today that Jesus Christ has fought that battle Amen. and he can give you complete victory. Amen. As we gather around this altar to pray, I pray that the Lord will bless you with victory today.
Our God in ages past, you are the same today, and you will be our God of eternity. Accept our thanks and praises. We thank you for this wonderful message you have sent to us today. Thank you for your love, for coming to this sinful world and shedding your precious blood for the remission of our sins. It is finished. Amen. It is finished. Amen. All our problems are finished. Amen. All the heartache is finished. Amen. All the t t nightmares finished. Amen. Eternal King of glory, please grant us your peace. Amen. Your children are now on their knees pleading for mercy. Please open the windows of heaven. Pour down your blessings. Save many more. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Heal the sick. Amen. Solve all our problems. Amen. Let us rejoice with you Amen. and live with you forever and ever. Amen. We know you will answer us. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.